So we are going to prove this identity, the sum from k equals 0 to w of negative 1 to the k times n choose k equals negative 1 to the w times n minus 1 choose w. Now this identity is going to be very important in a really cool series video coming up soon on my channel. And in order to figure out this identity, we're going to use the formula x choose y equals x factorial divided by y factorial times x minus y factorial. Now in order to prove this identity, we're going to use induction because we want to prove this for all positive integers, w and n. So in order to do that, we're going to start off by proving a base case. In this case, we're going to use w equals 0. And then after that, in order to prove induction, we're going to say, let's assume it's true for some w equals m. And then we're going to say, given that we know it's true for w equals m, we can prove that it's true for the next case, m equals 1. That way, if we know it's true for 0, then it's also true for 1. And if we know it's true for 1, then it's true for 2, and then it's true for 3, and so on for every single integer. So then we prove the identity. Let's start out with the base case, w equals 0, which means we want the sum from k equals 0 to 0 of negative 1 to the k times n choose k. Again, we really don't care what the number n is. We are only focusing on w here. Well, in this case, this sum is only going to have one term, which is the zeroth term. So you get negative 1 to the 0 times n choose 0. Well, we know negative 1 to the 0 is going to be 1. And n choose 0, well, the number of ways to choose 0 things out of a group is also 1. There's only one way to do that. So this is equal to 1. And the question is, is it equal to what we want over here? Well, let's plug in 0 on this side and see what it is negative 1 to the 0 right here, and then we have n minus 1 choose 0. Well, is n minus 1 choose 0 equal to 1? Yes. Is negative 1 to the 0 equal to 1? Yes. So in fact, this is true, and therefore we proved that this identity is true for when w equals 0. Now, we're going to do the induction step, which says we assume that this identity is true for w equals m. And we're going to ask, what is this sum for w equals m plus 1? And we're going to use the fact that we know w equals m to figure that out. So we take this sum from k equals 0, and now we're going to use m plus 1 of negative 1 to the k times n choose k. And in order to do this, we're going to split up the sum into two parts. So first, we're going to take out the m plus 1 term separately. So we're going to get negative 1 to the m plus 1 times n choose m plus 1. And then we have the rest of the sum, the sum from k equals 0 to m. Well, we know this identity is true for w equals m. So the sum from k equals 0 to m of this thing is just going to be what we have over here. And that is the beauty of induction. We can already plug this in. Negative 1 to the m times n minus 1 choose m. And all we have to do is prove that this is equal to what we have on the right side over here. So to start out, let's expand out all of these choose notations using our x choose y. Now, I'm also going to factor out a negative 1 to the m plus 1. So to start off on this one, n choose m plus 1 is going to give us n factorial over m plus 1 factorial times n minus m plus 1, or n minus m minus 1 factorial. And then for the second one, notice we have negative 1 to the m. If we already factored out negative 1 to the m plus 1, that's going to leave us with another negative coming out. So we're going to have a minus, and then n minus 1 choose m will be n minus 1 factorial over m factorial times n minus 1 minus m factorial. All right. So now it's time to simplify this down into something that's a little easier to work with. So to start out, we keep this negative 1 to the m plus 1. What we want at the end is an n minus 1 factorial on the top for our n minus 1 choose w. So let's write this n factorial, first of all, as n times n minus 1 factorial. And now let's look at these denominators and see how we can put them together. I'm going to write out the denominator on this side, m plus 1 factorial times n minus m minus 1 factorial. 
And now, for the next one, we have n minus 1 factorial on the top. But then on the bottom here, we have an m factorial. But for this denominator, it's m plus 1. We want those to be the same so we can put the fractions together. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply by m plus 1 on the top and bottom of this fraction. So on the top, we'll have what we had originally, and then times m plus 1. On the bottom, m factorial times m plus 1 is going to give us that m plus 1 factorial that we want in both denominators. And then we have m minus m minus 1 factorial. So our denominators are finally the same, and we're able to put them together. So now this is equal to negative 1 to the m plus 1. And then on the top, we're going to have an n minus 1 factorial in both of them. And then if we factor that out, we're going to get n minus minus m plus 1, just like that. Well, that's kind of strange, because our denominator, we have m plus 1 factorial, and then we have n minus m minus 1 factorial. So these two are very similar. What's up with that? Well, here's the thing. What we can do in this case is consider, for example, a divided by a factorial. What is this equal to? Well, we know that a factorial is a times a minus 1 times a minus 2, and so on down to 1. Notice that the a on the top and the a on the bottom are actually going to cancel. And that's going to leave us with 1 over a minus 1 times a minus 2 all the way down to 1, which means on the bottom, we now have a minus 1 factorial. So we can use this fact, a over a factorial equals 1 over a minus 1 factorial. Right here, our a is n minus m minus 1. So we can actually take this out of the numerator and then subtract 1 from this factorial. So if we do n minus m minus 1 and then subtract 1 again, we get n minus m minus 2. Now here's the question. Can we write what we have here in terms of this choose notation? Well, let's try it out. And in order to do that, let's look at just this factorial right here, because that seems to be the most confusing one. I'm going to give us a little more space to work with right here. And let's consider if there's a way we can rewrite this in terms of the other two numbers that we have here. We have n minus 1. So let's see. Let's take one of the minus 1s from this minus 2 and put it next to the n. So we'll have n minus 1 and then minus m minus 1. So in this case, we still get n minus m and then minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 like we want. And then what we also have is an m plus 1. Well, we have a minus here. What if we factored out a negative 1? Well, then we would get minus m plus 1, because this will give us the negative 1 that we want. So in fact, now this entire thing is in terms of n minus 1 and m plus 1. It's exactly in this form right here. We can write this as negative 1 to the m plus 1 times n minus 1 choose m plus 1. And if we look at this formula over here, we see everything checks out. We get n minus 1 factorial over m plus 1 factorial, and then n minus 1 minus m plus 1, exactly what we want. So this means that as long as we know it's true for some value m, we can always prove it's true for the next case, m plus 1. And since we know it's true for 0, then it's true for 1, then it's true for 2, true for all integers greater than or equal to 0. And therefore, we have proved this identity right here.